You know anything about a Greek god called Kronos? He carried a sickle. This intro is from the series Outer Range. It inspired me to write the intro for my video about conscious machines. I really like the series and I think it fits to this video because it's about the gods, or god, depending on the degree from which one looks at the spectrum of possibilities. In my video about the Mountain of Truth, I explain that many contradictions are just different degrees between wholeness and detail. In total wholeness and the highest abstractions of all things is the unity of all things. It is the highest category in which everything is seen as one. That means that on this level there is only the monotheistic unity. But we can go down the mountain into detail. And just as we sometimes call the archetypes gods, we could say that the two essences are two gods. The god of chaos and the god of order. Further into detail, but still in the world of archetypes, then come processes like Kronos, who creates chronology by separating past and future. We can go so far into detail that we leave the archetypes and come to physical events, down to the smallest details of quantum physics. This means that my philosophy is both monotheistic and polytheistic, because these are just different degrees of the same thing. Since they form a unity together as a spectrum, above them stands again the truth that all is one, because at the top of the mountain it is monotheistic and further down it is polytheistic. The only question is then at what level one stops calling things gods. As soon as we have left the highest mono level and moved on to the two essences, some people don't even stop calling things god when they have already left the world of archetypes, and are in the physical detail where people can be found. If we still call everything gods there, then we are all positive physical gods as individuals. Through the Philosopher's Stone one can reflect a divine structure in one's own mind, which can then make someone a demigod, but actually every human being is subordinate to this great metaphysical structure. After all, a mirror that reflects the image of a human being is not really a half-human. One problem is that people don't understand these levels of abstraction and turn monotheistic doctrines into a cult and argue about who has a cooler god. And because their ideology is monotheistic but serves an ideology and not natural law, they think it should apply everywhere, instead of realizing that the unity of things is beyond religious or political ideologies and that unity is there whether we believe in it or not. This is the same problem with all ideologies. People define positive freedom rights as objective rather than the negative freedom rights that are given by nature. Any moral idea that is not oriented towards the negative and claims that it must apply everywhere leads in the final consequence to an imperialist ideology and a totalitarian world state. It doesn't matter whether it's political right, left or religious ideology. On a higher level of abstraction, there's not much difference between religious ideologues and atheistic Marxists. They declare positive laws to be universal and twist decentralized nature into totalitarian barbaric systems in which people fight each other. I think the monotheistic religions all trying to describe the same thing, the top of the mountain of truth, but the followers make a cult out of it because people make a cult out of everything. Everyone tries to get the other submit to their god and in the process they all become godless ideologues. Truth and god do not mind being questioned. It is a lie that demands violence and submission. 
with all the religious tribalistic cults, it is even a necessity to question the learned God. Only the question leads us to an answer. Those who cannot question God cannot find an answer, but only fall into an ideological belief system. This makes people extremely vulnerable to psychological manipulation by manipulating religious writings. The people are then like golems who have no free will but only follow dogmatically the teachings that are written on a scroll and thrown into them because they are afraid to question it. To summarize, it is the same as a mountain of truth. Polytheism and monotheism are just different degrees of the same thing. Since humanity does not understand the highest level of abstraction, the idea of universal laws is perverted. Religious fanatics are doing nothing different than atheistic Marxists. It is simply globalist and imperialist bullshit. Instead of understanding religions as a result of different cultures having recognized universal patterns in different places and describing them with different cultural language and then honoring other religions, people start to impose their ideologies they have developed from their religion on others, when they actually could learn so much from each other, for example that religious knowledge is universal and deals with eternal truth that can be discovered in any place and at any time. Monotheism can only be understood with a God formula, which unites all the opposing poles. It is a philosopher's stone which, as a theory of everything, is the origin of monotheism. If we search for the first monotheism, we find the Judaism and come to the Abrahamic religions. There we find the Genesis story. According to Wikipedia, the philosopher's stone can be traced back not only to Plato, but also to Adam. But obviously, it didn't really work out that the people understood monotheism and the philosopher's stone correctly. He was led into consciousness by the serpent and was enlightened, but humanity was not, which led to dogmatic religious wars breaking out and the world falling into dual tribalistic cults because they did not understand the teachings themselves, or reinterpreted them as if their own culture was a chosen one and everyone else would be godless. Religions have become a cargo cult just like those natives who build airplanes and pilot goggles out of wood. They don't understand it and try to imitate it somehow. For example, drinking wine as blood, which is actually an allegory, like walking in someone's footsteps, but more heavy, because blood is also associated with suffering and love. So it means walking a similar path and looking with someone's perspective. You achieve immortality by looking from the alchemist's perspective that recognizes the soul, not by literally drinking someone's blood. Whether someone belongs to the people of God does not depend on cultural origin or race, but on how much one is in natural harmony. If one believes that one would be part of the chosen culture and thinks that all other cultures are beneath and worthless, then one is not part of God's people. Then it is just a racist, narcissistic ideology. Just because someone's culture once produced someone very wise who could teach God's laws doesn't make one a saint. In every culture and nation, there are those who are in harmony with God and those who are not. I don't really understand why this is so hard to understand for some. There is a saying that one should not form an image of God. So let's take another step higher up the mountain and ask ourselves, who actually created the universal and eternal truth that, for example, if something doesn't change, no development can take place, or that if a reality has no natural laws, everything collapses before it can become something. So who created laws that have been true since eternity? You are welcome to try to find an answer to this, but there is only madness to be found. That's why you should not try to create an image of a creator of a universal truth. It won't lead you anywhere, except maybe to the asylum. In physical reality, we can always go one step higher, into infinity, without ever reaching the end. Let's assume we are in a simulation. Where is our reality simulated? In a reality that is similar to ours. And where does this reality and life come from? It is also simulated by a reality that is similar to the reality in which we are being simulated. And who created life and reality there? 
It is an infinite loop without ever reaching the end. Hypothetically, there is always a higher reality. But in the negative world of eternal truth and archetypes, we come to a dead end. We come to the question of what created the truth that has always been true. A truth that does not have to grow organically and exist even if there is no reality in which anything happens. The active physical reality is infinite. The passive structure of archetypal truth is eternal. If the origin of the monotheistic religions is a scientific world formula, it means that religions have a scientific basis. It is the same with modern science. It also had a scientific basis. Now it's overrun with people who can't even distinguish between universal laws of nature and arbitrary ideological laws like mandatory vaccination. I know that sounds strange, but this pseudoscientific cult at universities really has its roots in natural science. That's no longer visible today, I know. That's because people turn everything into a narcissistic Shizu cult. See no